So today I bring you the Google Pixel 4a Q&A session. So I will pick out some of your questions and comments and try to answer them in this Q&A. So here's the first question from Cami. How's that screen brightness, mate? So you have a 5.8 inch Full HD Plus OLED display which supports HDR, it's a 60 hertz display and the screen does get fairly bright. Now I have tested this in both day, night and outdoors and I have no issues whatsoever with the brightness, it's actually pretty good. So ready to answer the next question and I have all the pixels on the table ready to help me out. So the next question is from Michael, how much better of an upgrade from the 3A do you think it is? 3A owner here and love it. Well, here's the thing. If you already have the 3A, the 4A is not a giant leap. But that being said, the 4A is still slightly better from nearly every category. So you're getting a better battery, better design, larger screen, better camera, especially for low light and night shots. You're getting a better CPU, better gaming performance, more RAM, more storage, and still people are calling it an incremental upgrade. Now using both phones at the same time, I'm personally really liking the 4A more. The design is just too good compared to all the previous Pixel models. Now if you're thinking of waiting for the Pixel 5, of course you will be paying a lot more money for it. Pixel 5 I believe is rumored to start from 629 or more and the 4A that I have in my hands right now is only 350. So your question was how much better of an upgrade from the 3A do you think it is? I think it's not a giant leap of an upgrade, it's an incremental upgrade. But if you add all those small updates, if you add them all up, including the design hall, you will feel you've got a brand new updated phone in your hands. It's not going to feel familiar, it's not going to feel like the Pixel 3a in your hands, uh, a little bit smaller. It actually feels like a brand new design, brand new phone. Um, if you upgrade, it's going to feel like an upgrade. Now the next question comes from Mark AJ and he wanted clarification about the video storage. So he says unlimited video storage, meaning free cloud storage space. So you do get free unlimited storage in Google Photos for all your videos and photos, but there is a catch. So all your videos and images will be compressed to HQ quality, to high quality, then it's totally free unlimited storage. But if you want to upload in original quality, then I believe there is a charge for this. So free unlimited photo and video storage in Google Photos as long as you let it be compressed in HQ quality. I hope that answers your question. Now the next question is from Mr. Geller. Does the Pixel 4a have stereo speakers? And the answer is yes, the Pixel 4a does indeed have stereo speakers. You have one speaker at the bottom and one on the earpiece and I will show you it in action right now. The 4a has just been revealed and I'm sure you guys have already seen at least 50 unboxing videos. So today I bring you a head-to-head -head comparison between the Google Pixel 3a versus the brand new Google Pixel 4a. So welcome back to the channel, I'm Chicks, and I hope you all are having an amazing day. Now the next question is from Blue Fist. I'm still using a Pixel 2 XL. Would it be worth to change to the 4A? The only issue I have with my 2 XL is the battery drains a little faster than before, but it's also a phone from 2017, so obviously the battery has seen better days. Well, I don't actually have the Pixel 2 XL on this desk, but I can tell you right now that the Pixel 4a's Snapdragon 730 chipset is actually more powerful and also more energy efficient than the Snapdragon 835 in the Pixel 2 XL. The overall specs, storage, RAM, everything is better in the 4a. You also have a smaller and lighter device. Now you will have to consider the screen size as you will be dropping down from a 6 inch to a 5.81 inch. But me personally, if I had a choice between the two, I would definitely go for the Pixel 4a. Now the next question is from Ronald. I would prefer a comparison between the 3a XL and the 4a. Sure thing. Here is the 3a XL and here is the 4a. Physical comparison side by side and you will see the specs on the screen as well. So you can see the design, how they look and feel from the back. If we flip it around. Now at first glance, it almost looks like the screen is the same size. Of course the specs will tell you the truth, 
but the top and bottom bezels are totally trimmed down giving you a much better looking phone it feels much better in the hands now the specs are similar but you get a new cpu more ram more storage and better camera especially for low light shots and you get astrophotography and so many more new features i definitely prefer the performance style and features of the pixel 4a over both the 3a and the 3a xl now the next comment we have is by ak tech Apple did better, they put a cheap phone with the most powerful CPU. Why can't Google do that? They put a slow CPU. Now what I want to do in this situation is a quick side by side. Now as I returned my iPhone SE, as I had no use for it, here is the iPhone 8, which basically looks exactly the same in dimensions and even has the same 4.7 inch retina display with an HD plus resolution. So yes, you have the Apple A13, most powerful chipset for the price, but everything else is old school, including that HD plus display, you got less RAM, less storage, giant bezels on top and bottom, and the smallest battery we have ever seen in an iPhone. But what I like about the iPhone is the power performance, wireless charging, IP rating, and the ability to shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. Now the Pixel, which is 70 pounds cheaper, gives you a much more advanced OLED display, a mid-range Snapdragon performance, which lets you do more or less everything that you can do on the iPhone. For example, play games, watch movies, and you have a bigger screen to enjoy that content. Now the Pixel 4a will also give you double the RAM, double the storage, amazing astrophotography and an overall amazing camera and nearly double the battery capacity. So effectively, you're getting more for your money with the Pixel 4a and to be totally honest, if I had to pick from the two, I would certainly pick the 4a. Now it's about time Apple changed their design. If Pixel can do it at this price point, why can't Apple? Now the next question I have is from SFC India. Please tell about the brightness of both devices. Is there any improvements in the 4A? Now this question relates to the Pixel 4 versus the Pixel 4a and here they both are in my hands. Now basically I could not find any stats for brightness. I have no idea how many nits the 4a is. But after using both phones I can tell you that the brightness looks exactly the same. And what I'll do is I will select exactly the same wallpapers, put that brightness on max and show you guys exactly what they both look like. So here you go, same wallpapers, same maximum brightness. And as you can see for yourselves, the brightness looks exactly the same on both devices. So I hope that answers your question. Now the next comment I just wanna share with you guys as it's such a nice, positive comment from Bupesh Jain. Hello from India, I want to tell you that I have seen so many YouTubers like The Verge, Unbox Therapy, etc. You sir, got the job well done, no dramas, up to the point, that's what I'm here for. You explain things in simple and short, and the specs chart besides is intelligent idea to show comparisons of all specs, no need to go to GSM Arena. Thank you, may the force be with you. I subbed and liked your video. So, big shout out to Bupesh Jain, a very nice comment. It's comments like that which makes me want to carry on, which makes me want to do this job. I've always said this is the people's channel and I do this for the people and my passion for technology. And that is the reason why I have such a wide range of products on the channel. I don't like to just do mobile phones or just do game consoles. Technology is amazing and I like to share all sorts of technology with you guys and I like to share my passion. That's what this channel is about. So thank you for that comment and anyone else who's left a positive comment Big shout out to you guys. You are the reason why I operate this channel. Now the next comment is from Daniel Stewart. You should have seen if the 4A could provide good long range photos as it doesn't have the telephoto lens. Now the Google Pixel 4 has a telephoto lens and that telephoto lens kicks in when you zoom in on your subject. So your subject has to be at a distance and when you zoom in, it will automatically switch to the telephoto lens. If your subject is already too close, then it would just do an eight times digital zoom and it won't and it won't switch to the telephoto lens. Now the Pixel 4a doesn't have a secondary telephoto lens, but what it does have is high res zoom. So you can zoom in on your subject, take a picture, and it will use the amazing Google software in order to enhance that photo and make it look good. So the device on the left is the Pixel 4. So we took a long distance shot with the telephoto lens you can see the picture quality is quite clear. A little bit of noise because it was a low light shot. And the same photo we tried to take with the Pixel 4a. And as you can see, we have a very similar quality. Even though the Pixel 4a doesn't have a telephoto lens and both shots have been taken in low light, 
the results are quite similar. So it looks like the super high res zoom gives you a similar quality as the telephoto lens. I mean, the telephoto lens might be a little bit better, but you would have to look for that detail closely. From first glance, they actually look the same. So it's quite amazing that the Pixel team was able to give us a telephoto lens effect without a secondary lens. That's what I call amazing. So the next comment comes from Parish. What about slow motion video? So the slow motion video is basically the same as the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL. So not much has changed. I'll quickly show you. So here is slow motion. And there are the speeds. And I'll give you a quick demo of both. So I guess I'm just going to wave my hand around. Okay, and we'll try the one eighth speed. Here we go. Same movement. And let's play that back. Here we go. So yeah, slow motion does work pretty well. And it's exactly the same as what you get in the Pixel 4 and the 4XL. Okay, next question. I have a 3AXL and I can't find a side-by-side -side comparison. Is the screen size similar with the Pixel 4a? So here is the Pixel 3AXL. Here is the 4. Here's a quick side-by-side, -side, especially for you. So that's how they look. Flip them around. And there you go. I did do this earlier. And as you can see, if you're looking straight at the screen, they actually look like the same screen size. Okay, but obviously in the specs, you've got a slight difference. Huge forehead and chin on the 3A XL. Much heavier as well. And this 4A is just a beauty. I love the design. I love how light it is. I like how you've got a full screen display. Now here is a quick side by side. You can see the specs on the screen. So someone's asking me, do you like the UmiDigi S5 Pro or the Pixel 4A? I don't believe I have the UmiDigi S5 Pro handy right now, but I know exactly what phone you're talking about. Pixel 4a is much better than the UmiDigi S5 Pro. There's no competition there. This wins hands down. In fact, I had a look at the pre-orders and they are, you're on a waiting list now if you want to buy this phone. It's, it's that popular that you can't even do a pre-order right now. You have to sign up for a waiting list. So that tells you how many people will want this phone. So... If you want it, sign up for the waiting list. Now that's a good question. Why is the OnePlus Nord so hyped up? Now I don't have the OnePlus Nord to compare, so I'm just gonna hold this little case here. This is the OnePlus Nord and this is the Pixel 4a. Side by side comparison people. So you can see the specs. So looking at the specs, the Nord has a larger and better quality 90 Hertz display, a faster Snapdragon chipset, more RAM, same storage, you get an in-display fingerprint sensor, Android 10, a massive 4,115 milliamp hour battery, you've got 30 watt fast charging, but there is no audio jack and you have only a single speaker. Now whilst the Nord does tick most of the boxes, the deciding factor for myself would be the cameras. And I'm not sure if the Nord can live up to the Pixel 4S's camera. Again, OnePlus kindly sent me a clear see-through version of the Nord. If they possibly send me the actual unit, then maybe we can find out which one is actually better. But as it stands, Nord fights a strong case, but the camera will decide it for me. Next question, does the Pixel 4a have 60 FPS video recording? I'm gonna go straight into video recording mode and I'm gonna show you what the settings are. So you've got 4K Ultra HD resolution and Full HD. So Full HD has 60 FPS or 30 FPS. But when you go into 4K mode, you don't have a choice because it's locked onto 30 FPS. I hope that answers your question. So let's look at one more question. Assuming Google Pixel 4XL and 4A are the same price, which one would you pick? Well, if they were both the same price, I would probably go for the 4XL as it has the better and more powerful specification. But at normal pricing, I would definitely go for the Pixel 4A as it's better value for your money. So that concludes my first ever Q&A session for the Pixel 4A. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have 
an amazing day. I'll see you guys in the next one.